Good Maxi morning. Talk about leadership because it's one of the key components um, that women need. It's a, it's a, some of us are born with leadership characteristics, some of us are not. And taking a leadership role in your life, uh, basically taking a lead role in your life and leading yourself is one of the first things you can do, right? But I was noticing um, in some conversations that I was having with some women over the last week or so. Okay, so now there's connection. So I'm back. Maybe I was gone there for a while and now I'm back. Okay, so here's what I wanna to, want to get into today. For those of you that struggle with taking a leadership role, hi Taylor, was I, was I frozen there for a minute? So it said I, was, I had a low network connection and now I'm back. Okay, so I don't know what you missed and what you heard, but taking a leadership role for a woman is difficult because of one thing and that is that it's just not really in our DNA. So if you were to look, to look back in history of our DNA and what that really means, well first of all, women in our DNA is set up to be in tribes, right? Be, have support. Uh, and that support and being in uh, basically traveling in tribes, working together, all of that is very natural. So when we stand up and take a leadership role, one of the main things that we need to do is set boundaries set boundaries and when we set boundaries like for instance as simple as setting a boundary for your time and saying no saying no more to coffee breaks or excuse me not coffee breaks but co a coffee date so when a woman takes a stand and says no i can't i'm sorry i'm too busy or whatever for whatever reason i'm going to say no to this opportunity to have a you know a, a coffee date with you for you to pick my brain or whatever there is a a very innate very uh, uh, like a survival mechanism that kicks in and it's basically fear fear of being ostracized so we want to be nice it is in our DNA we are supposed to be nice that's this this feeling and if you look at basically um, our natural ways of DNA and then now where we are now in our current opportunities and I'm talking about women specifically if you look at the opportunities that we have now and then you look at our DNA it is not caught up that that's why women are struggling because our DNA has not caught up with the opportunities that are around us now so we struggle and this is why women if you look at the growth rate of entrepreneurial women and the growth rate of their business and income it's not really changed much it's like what two percent of, 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 of growth um, at the millionaire at the million mark and so if you think about hi there sushi um, I hope that I'm pronouncing your name right by the way it might be sushi I might be completely wrong on both of those <laughs> you'll have to correct me um, but do you see what I'm saying so this it's actually completely understandable completely understandable what I'm talking about is the fear the fear of not being liked is in our DNA and it is there for a reason and so when we look at the opportunities that we have now around us as women we are many of us are scared to death 
because we don't even and we don't even understand what that fear is and it's the fear of being ostracized because when you start setting boundaries and you start taking that leadership role because you've got to set boundaries with your time you you absolutely have to and when you do that you could be ostracized and you could be seen by the tribe by the other women okay as mean bitchy uh, not even um, someone that you know, someone that should be ostracized okay so think about that for a second that is deeply rooted in our DNA and so we're having to step out of that and that means what we think it means we think that it means um, being mean right so saying no to a coffee or a lunch or because when you really think about it think about all the time so I run a business from home and if I were to there are there I have enough to do trust me but if I were to take every coffee and every lunch opportunity that someone throws at me I think to myself do I have I, I don't know how I'm gonna fit that in because I have to focus on income producing activities and my clients and my marketing right so if I were to go to have lunch or coffee with somebody that is not a prospect, that is not, you know, someone that, uh, the key word here, synergy. I think we have some synergy. I'm not saying to not ever say yes to those opportunities, but start analyzing them more and don't, and, and understand that that fear that's coming up inside of you, when you begin to assess who's the most important and prioritizing that, see that sounds mean, right? Prioritizing people and their importance that can sound bitchy or mean, right? So setting those boundaries pulls up that feeling. But if I don't have lunch or coffee with her, she's going to think that I'm, you know, I don't want to be ostracized. I don't want her to think I'm rude, right? That can come up and you'll get over it. Trust me, you'll get over it once your business starts to grow. Because you, once you realize that you absolutely have to set these boundaries and you absolutely have to say no to a lot of those people at, in the networking groups that, by the way, I'm all about networking, okay, especially when you're starting out. But let's just be honest about some of these networking groups are not necessarily where you should be. I've seen people in network and I think, why are you coming here? Like you keep coming here and your prospects aren't here. Why are you doing it, right? And I think they're doing it because they want to be nice and it's not nearly as productive as it, as it can be. So getting back to this gap that's taking place of where we, you know, our, our DNA and where we are now as women and, and the opportunities, it's not caught up. So we've, we're, we've still got that part of us that feels rude or mean or scared to say no, and you have to. So you've got to surround yourself with people that are going where you want to go, okay? and those that can help you and those that are i hate to say it but those that are on your level those that are on your level now i heard someone say something similar to this the other day and she was ostracized and she was started getting hate mail because it she was she was she was teaching leadership and she was teaching it and those that did not like the sound of it were sending her hate mail right uh you think you're better than us. I've heard that before in my life from my own family members, okay? You think you're better than us. This is feelings, feelings that they are getting, okay? But when you're running a business, you really need to position yourself around some of the most important, you gotta prioritize, and you gotta, you, you've gotta surround yourself with the people that can take you where you wanna go, okay? And like true synergy, or focus on time management and income producing activities. So when you really, when I think about what it's gonna take for me to go have coffee or lunch with somebody, I think to myself, okay, travel time, I gotta get ready, I gotta do all these things. And so that could take what, an hour, hour and a half, maybe even just to get there, and then another hour, and maybe longer because women like to talk, right? It could be a two hour lunch and then an hour to get back just to have a coffee for someone to pick your brain, right? <laughs> Do you see where I'm going with this? We gotta protect our time and not be afraid of the outcome. You, in fact, should be more afraid of the time that you just threw out the window. 
that was time that you could have spent with content creation for your podcast, working on your sales page, working on your sales pitch, looking for speaking opportunities, writing a blog post or content that can be repurposed to your podcast or your YouTube channel and sent to your email list or creating an opt-in or creating a, a challenge like my Moxie challenge. Right? That all take those things take time setting up. And if you are taking two, three, four hours to let someone pick your brain, that is not going to work for you. Not in the income area. That might be fun. Have a glass of wine, <laughs> screw off. I mean, that is basically what that's doing. Um, I'm not saying face to face is a complete waste of time, but I just see too many women going to networking events, setting up these coffee coffees or lunches to get together and they're just not even meant for each other like the synergy is not working and uh, it's not even beneficial for either one of them and it turns out to be something that is a complete waste of time right so me saying this can even sound a little bitchy right okay so protect your space protect your time from certain people uh, it's 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 basically doing that at Protecting your time, space, and from certain people is an act of power. That's what that is. It's an act of power. And an act of power will threaten people. It'll threaten some people. And you, you may even feel a little bit isolated, and there might be a gap between the time that you decide to take a stand on your time and the time that you find your people that are on your level, mentally, socially, um, that are on the same page with their time management, um, there will be a there will most certainly be a gap, right? You've heard that it's lonely at the top. Well, I don't want to go there necessarily, and, and I'm not saying that I'm at the top or someone is or is not at the top. That's not where I'm going with this. But there is a lot to be said in that little quote, okay? That on your way, you've got to let people go. You've got to let time certain things that you spend your time on go. You got to just let them go, and that is a scary, scary feeling. Right? It's not even in our DNA. It's really not even in our DNA for us to work in an isolated way or to feel isolated. It literally can feel like, I've heard this described, it can feel like you're gonna die. To some people, women, it could feel like you're gonna die. So where does that come from? Where does that feeling come from? I actually don't think there's anything wrong with somebody that has those feelings at all. I think it's in our DNA. It's in our makeup, and I'm not saying that it can't be um, it can't be tweaked and it can't be changed. But over time, you know, our daughters and our granddaughters, as these opportunities continue to grow, and, and we do see this shift. Uh, I don't. Some people call it shift in power. I don't like to call it that. I don't agree with that necessarily. But a shift in the opportunities. Okay, they will that feeling and fear in our daughters and granddaughters will start to dissipate by our actions and by them seeing us take more of a leadership role and more women starting to do that, it will change. But it's still not caught up with, and I see it all the time in women, them not being able to be a leader in their life, a leader with their time, and a leader in um, you know, standing for something. Take, stand, having an actual point of view is scary as hell. It can be scary as hell, but it's something that you have to do. You have to do. I'm not saying there aren't women that are out there that are not opinionated. <laughs> We're all, all those are, I'm not talking about opinions necessarily. I'm talking about taking a point of view and a stand for what you do, coming up with an offer and starting a business and selling, learning how to sell and market yourself and putting yourself on camera just like I'm doing now is scary as shit to some women. And it is because it is taking a stand and it is basically uh, taking a stand of power. That's what it is. And, and some women will be threatened because they're not there yet. They're not, they're not even close to being there yet. So they don't know how to take it and they see it as a threat towards them, okay? But, and that's okay. But some of the hate mail that you'll get or some of the dislike that you'll get, that's where it's coming from. It's coming from a, it's a, it's a fear inside of them that you, you're a threat. Like that's what's coming up for them, right? But the more you do it, the more you will help them change and shift that feeling in them. Okay, so it's basically like exerting our sovereignty, right? It's just kind of new. It's a new thing. I don't care what people say about 
how far we've come. Um, it, it's not near. It's not near caught up. So a lot of us women are carrying around this feeling of confusion almost. This feeling of confusion. So here's what you do. Here's the answer. You've got to start uh, recognizing it, understanding it, and going. Okay, not don't beat yourself up about it. If you have fears about taking a leadership role, sharing your point of view, don't beat yourself up about it. It's it's actually something that. Uh, comes from many, many generations, right? And then a conditioning that took place. And so it's something that is new, that has fear attached to it. So you, the best thing you could do is surround yourself with other women doing what you, doing exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Saying no more, okay? To the things that aren't working, to the things that are a waste of time, saying no more and stepping into that, basically an act of power. Ooh, I like that, Betty. You can change, we can change our DNA, it's called epigenetics. I think I've heard something like that, but I didn't know what that meant. Very interesting. Um, so, I hope this helped. Start recognizing uh, that you may be surrounding yourself with the, with the very people that are keeping you down and you not even realizing it, and you doing it out of fear, which is sometimes very natural, and it's in our DNA. And so, what are you gonna do to take a leadership role in your life, okay, and start protecting and, and setting up boundaries and start being okay with this feeling that, of, that you're not being liked by doing so, okay? There are people that will still like you. There are actually people that will be inspired by you and say thank you for doing it, okay? So get your focus on them. Surround yourself with people on your level, and that simply means it's not about a person being better or less than. That's not what I'm saying. What I mean is get people, get around and surround yourself with people that are on the same mental level, the, the, the same mental level and going where you want to go, right? And then as you step into that, hi Santrina, when you step into that leadership role and start taking a stand and start sharing your point of view on your podcast, on your YouTube channel, and all of these many different ways, you will like I've said before, you will start pulling, okay? You can't push a string, you pull a string. You, were, you will start pulling your new tribe and those that want to learn from you and be inspired by you, okay? I'm looking at my notes here. Um, and by the way, none of these are soft skill, skills. I did some volunteer work for a women's organization here that needed to learn soft skills. And I realized I'm not a soft skill I'm not one that is like, well, I don't want to, I want to teach them, I want to teach them new skills. That's what I, when I was looking over, and I, in fact, I, I helped that organization revamp what they were teaching. I wanted to teach them more mindset. There wasn't a lot of mindset stuff that they were teaching them. They were teaching them soft skills on how to get a job. And, how, and so I saw an opportunity to help them tweak some of what they were teaching those women in that um, shelter. They're in a shelter, basically, and in a program. And so soft skills, yes, were important to them, but why not help them um, step into being a, more of a leader in their life, right? And so I'm talking about higher level skills that women need to understand and protecting your time in your business and surrounding yourself, like being so laser focused on who do I want to serve? Who is that person? What is my message to that person? How often am I getting in front of that person? And when is it that, um, when is it that I'm going to start feeling comfortable enough to say no to the people that are, are not our tribe or are not on the same level as us mentally in terms of where they're going? Not in terms of this person is better, in terms of where this person wants to go and where are they in their life? Maybe they're not ready, right? So we can't be offended by them being offended, right? So if they're offended and threatened and send hate mail or whatever you want to call it, you know, they're hurt. They're, they're, they're fearful. They're threatened. Let it go and understand this because when you start to understand people and the psychology of people and where they are and where you need to be, it gets a lot easier, right? Because there is this thing that happens with women too, where we will actually, when we feel like we're hurting people's feelings by taking a stand or sharing our point of view or starting our business and not having time for those people anymore, there is a part of us that feels guilty. You know that word, right? Ladies, we feel guilty 
it feels weird, it feels icky, all those feelings will dissipate when you surround yourself with those that are going in the same direction. That's why I started High Ticket Mastery because I saw a very real need for women to not only understand the skills of marketing and business, but also leadership and um, how to surround yourself with you know, a true sisterhood because there, you can still have a tribe of women that support you. Okay, just make sure it's the right tribe and that they are on the same level and wanting some of the same things that you want. Okay, so that starts with networking groups and who you're having coffee with and who you're letting pick your brain, right? Okay, those things are important. Start saying no and feeling comfortable and doing it in such a way that you're taking a stand and, and you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, hurtful. It doesn't have to be hurtful to say no. Okay, so. If you are interested in Moxie Challenge and you have signed up for that, you can go to moxiechallenge.com. It's totally free, it's 30 days, and I'm going to teach you in some of these areas how to step up and be a leader in your life, but also some millionaire mindset hacks that you're gonna love, and then how to physically, how, how to physically, spiritually, and emotional, all of that, um, how they work together to be a better leader in your own life. Okay, and how to heal wounds, certain wounds that some people don't like to talk about. I'm gonna mention that. So go to moxiechallenge.com. If you're interested, it's 30 days, it's free. You will get an email pretty much every day with an, a, a little assignment. I'm gonna challenge you to do, do all the things that you have been fearing and maybe even becoming more self-aware of, 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 of yourself and what, what causes you to stop. What causes you to stop? Because the stopping and starting, that is a killer for any project, for any business. So when you start and you stop and you start and you stop, you've actually trained yourself to continue doing that. And it's a pattern, could have been a pattern that you've had your whole life. And that is what I want to help you overcome so that you can start and stay going. Okay, so being hyper aware when you're starting something new, um, it could be just you know losing weight, it could be anything. But what I want to help you do is to keep going and be a finisher, be a finisher, so when you start to be a finisher and be aware of what it is that's stopping you, like why am I stopping? And then pushing yourself just a little bit more and through it, you'll actually start to, when you do that each time, you'll actually start to build confidence in that area and you'll be able to take it over uh, into other areas of your life, whether it be business, whether, whether it's starting to say no to people that are not on your level um, in networking groups, okay, and wasting your time, whether it be you uh, challenge yourself to fitness, okay, a fitness routine, and you notice that it's, say, on the seventh day you start to pull back, or the third day you start to pull back. When you start to recognize those, those moments, you know what to do, right? And, and so you start feeding your confidence instead of killing your confidence when you do that, okay? So new habits, new leadership skills, go to moxiechallenge.com and join us. And for those that signed up over the weekend, you'll be getting emails today with some videos to introduce some of these concepts. Okay, I can't wait to see you. Oh, and there's a Facebook group, that's what I mean, because I'm gonna actually have you or encourage you to do some live streams in the Facebook group about your challenge, what you're challenging yourself in, in what area, and then, um, and then share it with us on live stream. Some of the things that uh, hold people back is being seen. The fear of being seen, is a big one for people, especially when you're starting out in business. And some of the best things you can do is actually challenge yourself in another area and work up to that. And then start to do it in a safe environment, safe place, like a live stream in a Facebook group where everybody is supporting you and you don't feel like you're gonna be ostracized, okay? It's very powerful. So that's what we're gonna be doing and that's what I mean when I say I hope I see you soon. Okay, have a great day everybody, bye.